Hello, and welcome to the VLUX Skylight installation video. We're going to demonstrate the curb-mounted installation method. Curb-mounted skylights have a wide range of sizes and accessories available. Curb-mounted skylights are the preferred method of installation in some areas and incorporate an essential technique if installing a skylight on a low-sloped roof. So you want to install a skylight. It may seem like a daunting task, but when you use VLUX skylights and flashing systems, it isn't as hard as you might think. And when you install a VLUX curb-mounted skylight correctly, also known as the no-leak skylight, you can rest easy knowing that it will not leak no matter what. Our curb-mounted skylights come with an industry-first, 10-year, no-leak installation warranty, no matter who does the installation. Over the course of this video, you will see the various steps required to properly install VLUX skylights. Just follow along and you'll be a pro in no time. You can also refer to the installation literature included with your skylight and online at VLUXUSA.com. Okay, let's get started. The first thing to remember when working with skylights is that not all skylights are created equal. By choosing a quality VLUX skylight, you can be sure that your skylight will stand up to wind, rain, ice, and almost anything else Mother Nature will throw at it. Let's take a closer look. VLUX curb-mounted skylights consist of a quality aluminum frame with a Kynar 500 finish, an insulated glass lens, and an interior condensation drainage gasket. The integrated condensation drainage gasket will transfer any condensation from the inside of the house to the outside roof deck. During the installation process, this gasket will keep out water and air without the use of any sealants. VLUX skylights have two standard glass options, tempered, which provides excellent energy efficiency and thermal performance, and clean, quiet, and safe. Clean, quiet, and safe integrates a triple protection laminate that reduces water spotting and loosens organic material on the glass, lessens unwanted noise, and provides extra strength to meet building code regulations. Both are dual-paned, have a low E3 coating, and are injected with argon gas to provide excellent energy efficiency. There are also a variety of energy efficient specialty glass options available. Impact resistant and snow load glass options are available on most curb mounted skylights. You can find a complete list of glazings on the web at VLUXUSA.com. Okay, so before we start with the actual installation, we need to gather some information about the job site. A little bit of pre-planning now will save us a lot of time and effort later on. From inside the attic, identify whether the roof is constructed using rafters or trusses. In most cases, trusses cannot be cut, so if your roof is constructed in this way, it's important to pick a skylight size that fits between them. Fortunately, VLUX carries a series of skylights designed specifically for truss applications. Rafters, on the other hand, can be cut as long as they are properly reinforced. Make sure to measure the actual spacing between the rafters or trusses. Unfortunately, sometimes this measurement varies and may have an effect on the size of skylight you can use. Inspect the area inside the attic around the installation site for any obstacles that may be in the way. For example, electrical wires, ductwork, heat exchangers, and roof supports are all potential obstacles. Keep a minimum clearance of 18 inches above and below the skylight and 12 inches on the sides. This applies to any obstacles through the roof or slope changes like valleys, ridges, eaves, and roof-to-wall intersections. If an electric skylight is being installed, plan out the path for routing the wire to a power source. 20 feet of 14-2 wire is included with each electric fresh air skylight. Keep in mind the roofing material used. As we will discuss a little later on, VLUX has flashing options for most roofing materials, but you will have to know your roofing material in order to pick the right one. When installing a VLUX curb-mounted skylight, make sure that your roof pitch is between 0 and 60 degrees. If you're installing on a roof with a 0 to 14 degree pitch, then the installer will be responsible for the flashing and waterproofing of the curb. Always remember to check with local building code officials for any possible code issues. Now that we know the job site is clear, it's time to plan our installation. 
starting with the model, quantity, and sizes of skylights for the job. Velux curb-mounted skylights come in four models. The model VCS is a self-contained, solar-powered, fresh air skylight that opens with a remote control and closes automatically in case of rain. The model VCE is an electric fresh air skylight that also opens with a remote control and closes automatically in case of rain. The model VCM is a fresh air skylight that opens with manual controls. And finally, the model FCM is a fixed skylight that does not open. A variety of blinds are available for all four models and can be factory pre-installed at the time of ordering. As a rule of thumb, Velux recommends the daylight area be at least 10% of the floor area. This will provide the best lighting results. If large skylights cannot be installed because you have a truss roof, then you may want to consider using several smaller skylights together, providing the daylight levels of a larger skylight with an interesting architectural flair. Next, you need to choose the correct flashing kit for your roof pitch and roof material. If you are installing a skylight on a 10 to 60 degree roof pitch and the roof is built of shingles or other low profile roofing materials, Velux type ECL step flashing is the way to go. This flashing system interweaves with roofing materials to create a weather tight seal. If you are installing a skylight on a 15 to 60 degree roof pitch and the roof is built of tile, Velux type ECW tile flashing should be used. This flashing system is designed to fit the contours of most tile roofing materials. Velux curb mounted skylights can be installed on flat roofs, but flashing for the curb will be provided by the installer. This also applies to roofing materials other than shingles or tile. This video will focus on using the ECL flashing on a sloped roof with shingles. You can find more information about flashing systems on the web at VeluxUSA.com. Before beginning the installation, be sure you have all the tools you will need. The following tools and materials will be needed to complete the installation of your Velux skylight. A hammer, Phillips head screwdriver, drill, tape measure, flat pry bar, box cutter, level, square, circular saw or reciprocating saw, chalk line, shingles, felt paper or underlayment, staple gun, nails, and 2x4s for the curb. 2x6s can also be used with ECL flashing. And with that, you are ready to begin. With all our pre-planning out of the way, we're ready to begin the skylight installation. Let's get started by calculating and cutting the rough opening. To calculate the rough opening, take the outside curb dimension and subtract the total thickness of the curb wall. For this installation, we're using a 2x4 curb. Therefore, the total wall thickness will be 3 inches for each direction. Here's the rough opening calculation for Velux curb mount size 2234. The outside curb width is 25 and a half inches, so subtract 3 inches for the total wall thickness, 1 and a half inches per side, leaving a rough opening dimension of 22 and a half inches. The outside curb length is 37 and a half inches minus 3 inches. 1.5 inches per top and bottom, leaving a rough opening length of 34.5 inches. Therefore, the rough opening dimension will be 22.5 inches by 34.5 inches. From inside the attic, locate the four corners of the rough opening by measuring the intended installation space and driving nails through the roof deck, making sure that the opening will be square with the roof. These nails should be long enough to mark your installation area on the roof deck. Next, pull the shingles back about 8 to 12 inches from around the rough opening area, leaving the nails marking the four corners. With a chalk line or straight edge, mark the four sides of the rough opening. Once the area is marked, remove the marking nails and cut the rough opening with a circular saw or reciprocating saw. Finally, as needed, cut and head off the rafters to ensure adequate support. Be sure to install supports perpendicular to the roof deck and follow all applicable building codes. Now that the rough opening has been cut, the next step is to build the curb. Velux ECL flashing is designed to fit around a curb using standard 2x4 or 2x6 lumber. 
VLUX ECL flashing is ready out of the box to fit around a 2x6 curb. With minor adjustments, the ECL flashing will quickly be ready for placement around a 2x4 curb, as you will see in this video. Remember to build the curb according to the outside curb dimensions shown in the skylight installation instructions. The method for securing the curb to the roof deck is up to the installer. Some common methods include using nails or screws and toenailing through the sides, using L brackets found at your local hardware store, or using screws up through the roof deck. Prior to placing a solar skylight on the roof, locate the flip switch inside the operator cover and slide it toward the middle. With the curb installed, the next step is to wrap it. Proper wrapping keeps wind, rain, and debris from entering the home through any gaps around the skylight. To ensure weather tightness, the curb needs to be wrapped with underlayment, which is supplied with a flashing. This acts as a vapor barrier and helps keep out any moisture that may have gotten under the roofing material to cause condensation. For this installation, we will be using Velux Type ZZZ216 Skylight Adhesive Underlayment. Each roll is 9 inches wide by 21 feet in length and is included in the flashing kit. Prior to installing the adhesive underlayment, cut back the existing roof felt 3 inches on the bottom and sides and 7 inches at the top of the skylight. Start at the bottom of the curb with a piece of adhesive underlayment. Stick the top edge of the adhesive underlayment as close to the top of the wood curb as possible. Slowly work down the curb. Try to keep out all wrinkles and make a good crease at the transition from the curb to the roof deck. Cut the corners by starting at the bottom and cutting up and away from the curb at a 45 degree angle. Next, secure the top flap to the side of the curb and the bottom to the roof deck. Follow the same process for installing the adhesive underlayment to the sides, finishing with the top of the curb. At the corners where there may be small pinholes, you may want to cut small circular patches of adhesive underlayment to cover up any openings. Your curb is now ready for the ECL flashing. Since we are using a 2x4 curb, it is usually easier to prepare the flashing for the shorter 2x4 curb down on the ground. You can start by cutting a V at each seam down to the score line on the sill flashing. Remove the V-shaped piece, then bend the three sides of the score line back and forth until the upper portion is removed. Next, bend the step pieces back and forth until the top portion breaks away. Finish preparing your ECL flashing by cutting a V at each seam on the head flashing. Remove the V-shaped pieces and bend the sides back and forth until the tabs are removed. Do not remove the top portion of the head flashing. Simply bend it over as this will act as a water diverter. Before installing the flashing, be sure that the curb has been wrapped with adhesive underlayment for weather tightness. Then install a row of roofing material over the bottom edge of the underlayment. Start with a flashing installation by placing the sill flashing at the bottom of the curb. Make sure the shingles have been installed close enough to the curb so that the bottom flashing has proper coverage. Then secure it with roofing nails to the roof deck or curb. Once the sill flashing has been secured, it's time to start interweaving shingles and step pieces up the sides of the curb. Make sure the nails used for the flashing do not go all the way through the curb as this will affect the finished material used on the inside of the curb. In many cases, the top step piece will extend past the top edge of the curb. Do not skip this step piece. Cut it to an appropriate length so that it fits below the top edge of the curb. After the shingles and step pieces have been installed to the top of the curb on both sides, you can install the top flashing piece. The next step is to interweave the top flashing with the underlayment that covers the roof deck. If a seam is close to the top of the flashing, you can pull the nails out and slip a piece of underlayment under the seam and over the top flashing. If no seam is available, 
Make a cut in the underlayment just a little wider than the flashing and slip a piece of underlayment under the seam and over the top flashing as before. This step will divert water that has gotten under the shingles to the top of the flashing and shingles. To finish off your flashing installation, add your roofing material back around the curb. Ensure that there is a 2 and 3 8 inch to 4 inch gap from the top of the flashing to the bottom of the shingles. This may require trimming the bottom of the shingles as needed. Now that the flashing is complete and your curb is watertight, you are ready to install the curb mounted skylight. Using the screws provided, secure the skylight to the curb while applying a little pressure. This will create a good seal between the skylight and the curb. If you're installing a Velux type VCE electric fresh air skylight, then the curb must be prepared to route the wire. This can be done with one of two common methods. The first is simply drilling a hole through the curb, angling the hole so that the wire will not interfere with framing needed under the roof deck. The second method is to chisel a groove down the curb for the wire to lay in. Regardless of which method you choose, use a safety nailing plate to protect the wire from screws or nails. If you are installing a fresh air model VCE skylight, you need to wire it into the house prior to finishing off the light shaft. This step should be completed by a qualified electrician. A Velux VCE comes with 20 feet of 14-2 with ground type NM house wire. This wire must be run to a listed junction box for accessible connection and inspection to the house wiring. The connection should be to a single phase 120 volt branch circuit. The branch circuit should be a continuous electrical feed protected by a 15 amp circuit breaker or time delay fuse. You're now ready to connect and attach the solar panel. Connect the wire located on the bottom of the skylight to the solar panel and then attach the panel to the body of the skylight with the two screws provided. After the skylight has been secured, you should prepare the control pad for operation. Electric skylights must be connected to building power and solar skylights must have their power switched on. Electric and solar skylights must be powered in order to register the control pad with the skylight. Remove the battery lid on the back of the control pad by pressing the release button located on the bottom side cover. Insert batteries and reinstall battery cover. Select the language by swiping the languages up or down as needed. Once the correct language is selected, tap the arrow key in the top right corner of the display. Follow the instructions on the display and tap the arrow when ready to proceed to the next screen. If all your skylights and blinds have been detected, tap the arrow to finish the registration process. If the remote does not find all products, tap Search Again at the bottom of the display and follow the instructions in the display. At the Control Pad Ready display, tap OK to complete the registration process. The product you can operate is shown in the middle of the display. Select the product you want to operate by swiping your finger left or right over the display. Once you have selected the product to operate, the skylight can be opened or closed by swiping the slider at the bottom of the display to the right for opening or to the left for closing. Pressing the skylight to the left of the slider closes the skylight completely, and pressing the skylight to the right of the slider completely opens the skylight. When the skylight is being operated, it uses the same amount of power as a 60-watt light bulb. Complete documentation of all control pad features and functions are available in the online user manual for controls KLR200, located on the Velux USA website. With the skylight installed and operational, all we have left to do is frame the light shaft and finish off the interior. Before framing your light shaft, there are a couple of points that you will want to keep in mind. First, if you're installing a VCS, VCE, or VCM, be sure that you have ample room to add and remove the insect screen. To ensure that you have enough room, create the back of the light shaft a minimum of 90 degrees from the frame of the skylight. Second, be sure to flare the opening of your light shaft. This allows the maximum amount of light into the room. 
that also provides the most air circulation for fresh air skylights. Insulate the light shaft for maximum energy efficiency and make sure to follow all applicable building codes, especially with light shafts that require structural framing. With the skylight and light shaft in place, all that remains is to finish the interior. The light shaft can be finished with a variety of materials such as paint, stained wood, or wainscoting. What you use depends on your individual project. The top of the finished material can be topped with a J-channel or some type of molding to hide the rough cut edges of the finished material. Keep finished material at least one-fourth of an inch away from the glass pane on the skylight. Other than structural limitations, there are very few restrictions to light shaft design besides your imagination. And that is it. We're done. Over the course of this project, we've gone from a dark room with inadequate lighting to a bright, inviting room that everyone can enjoy. Here's a look back at what we've accomplished. First, we prepared the site for the skylight installation. Then we selected our skylight size, quantity, features, and flashings. Next, we measured and cut the rough opening. Then we built, secured, and wrapped a curve. Next, we installed the VLUX flashing. After that, the skylight and solar panel unit were installed. And to finish things off, we framed in and created the light shaft. You can get more information about VLUX products and accessories by visiting the website, VLUXUSA.com.